This is one chapter of the 12, separated and posted. It was taken from my main one hour and a half tutorial, hyphen documentary video, to make it easier for crafters to use. If you don't mind watching the whole thing, then click on the link in the description and the pinned comment. Finally, chapter 12, Arrows, the beak and talons of the hawk. Capítulo 12, Flechas, el pico y las garras del halcón. Original bow and arrows recipe. Our hawk is ready to fly, but needs its sharp weapons to catch prey. We're about to create a very special design that I'm very proud of. I'm using the normal thickness bamboo for my arrows. I'm trying to find the most straight pieces to have the best possible performance during flight. Raise the possibilities of hitting your target accurately as much as you can. You can check how straight they are by holding one end near your eye and rotating it. For this type of bow, I like to use 58 centimeters slash 22 inches and 13 16 long shafts, as long as the first bundle pieces for the bow of the same thickness. Don't be quick to dismiss a long bamboo stake. A straight arrow may be hiding on its length. Take your time to measure, select and cut your arrow shafts. While you do so, have in mind that the arrowhead will be made with a screw and it will be placed on the thick end. So don't cut that end on a node, otherwise there won't be an opening or enough space for the screw to be installed in the tube. The screw will also need enough length to be screwed in. Avoid being close to a node altogether. For this video I will make four arrows. I am working on all of them step by step simultaneously. As soon as you have the rough cuts of the shafts ready, it will be time to do exactly the same steps I did for the bow's bundle pieces. Clean them, scrape any imperfections and refine them with super glue. But this time don't use that glue on their two ends. Find the pencil sharpener and make the thick end a bit pointy. Don't overdo it though. All you need is to give some angle to those edges. You can do that with a knife too, but that takes more time. Tape the shafts in the same way as we did for the bow parts. I'll repeat myself and say that the wrapped tape holds the bamboo fibers together and stops the shaft from breaking. Do you want arrows with tips that can't break even if they hit a rock full force without spending your entire retirement money on them? So do I. The ideal is to find long steel screws for wood that fit perfectly in the tubes of the bamboo. In a case of emergency, I would scavenge them from furniture. Cut the screw's head at its root. It's best if you can find a heavy-duty bolt cutter. If you can't find such a tool, then you can use the wire cutter part of simple pliers and apply enough pressure to make a notch. Rotate the screw and keep making notches around it. Then you can break the head off if you use enough force. Place the prepared screw in the bamboo hole to barely hold itself there. Obviously the pointy end faces the opposite side of the hole. Carefully wet the bottom half of the screw with super glue and screw it quickly inside. You can use your pliers to have a stronger grip. Don't be slow while you do this if you don't want the glue to become rock hard before the screw is in. The shaft with the screw should be half the length of the bow if it is measured from its two extended points. Not because that's the rule, but it's the easiest measurement to use and have consistent copies of your arrows. Although the screw is firmly placed inside with rock-hard bamboo foam formed by the super glue, it won't last long if you shoot the hard surface. The screw would break the walls of the bamboo and get buried inside. I found the perfect solution against that. In essence, you need wire that bends and stays in that desired position. Find galvanized steel wire or expose some copper wire from a useless cable. If the wire acts like a rope and doesn't hold its shape, then it won't do. It should be wide enough to fill the gaps perfectly, not too much bigger or smaller. Use your wire exactly as we have used rope for the bow. Unravel it as you work to not waste unnecessarily your material. Place your wire of choice between the threads where the screw meets the bamboo. Let the ending of the wire look towards the path that leads to the pointy tip of the screw. 
Start wrapping it around the screw by following its ditch. Make 3 to 4 full circles. Cut the wire extension if there is any and press its end down to get it buried in the ditch. Some screws have a double path and it's more complicated to work with, so it's better if you choose those with just one. Try to tighten the wrapped wire on the root of the screw as if it is a nut. With the long side of the wire, make half a circle on the tip of the bamboo and bend it down as a corner. Unravel and cut a two fingers length wire extension. Bend it to make a double wire with a rounded tip. Make it fit the roundness of the bamboo like hugging it around. Use super glue to cover the entire surface from the ending of the coil all the way down to the rounded double wire. The glue will get inside the exposed flesh of the pointy bamboo and the coil. With the next step, the arrowhead will become immortal against any impact. While the glue is still wet, get electrical tape and cover the entire area. Some of the glue is squeezed out, spread it on the tape and continue overlapping it. You want to make all edges be round, so you should let your tape reach a little bit beyond the wire's tips on both sides. You want it rounded and smooth to penetrate and slide better in the target. When you finish wrapping it up, you can cover the arrowhead with super glue. Spread it all around. If some drops spill lower on the shaft, then rub them on the scotch tape exactly the same way as you did with the spray paint. This compound and materials are holding perfectly one another. Hit rocks all day long if you want. On the other end of the shaft, we will shape our advanced knockless type bottom. You want a rough surface that is not slippery and can be held firmly to pull back the arrow and draw the string. But not rough enough to cause friction damage. An onion shaped bulge is very comfortable to hold and when it reaches the handle, its shape slides smoothly around it without deviating the arrow's direction. There is no better material that is easy to work with and find than simple electrical tape. Use your two fingers to measure the distance of space your tape will use. Start wrapping from the side that faces towards the shaft's length and work it towards the tip. Start making little dimples to make the tape texture become rough. When you reach the end of the bamboo, let some of the tape hang on the air. You'll see why in the next step. Make one or two more rounds on that spot to form the onion shape. Then stop making dimples and make a smooth ending back on where you started. Find a wooden surface that you don't mind getting dirty and use super glue on the nox end. Push it on the wood and rotate it around. The extending tape will be crushed on the surface and a hollow shape will be formed there. Because of the rubbing, the glue is no longer slippery but acts as rubber. In combination with the hollow shape, it fits on the string and doesn't fall off. Use super glue again on the entire tape wrap, but this time rub it with a plastic bag. Again, that will create an unslippery texture while the knock is completely waterproof and sealed. Now, even if it gets wet, it won't be slippery and you can shoot your arrow with no issues. Also, by using glue on top of the tape makes it impossible to ever unravel and ruin its shape. Only the fletching is left to finish the arrows. This is the biggest secret of these arrows. We no longer require feathers. Natural feathers are soft and when they're shot, they pass through the handle smoothly. Their shape is deformed by being pushed down and becomes one with the shaft. But feathers are easily ruined, especially if they get whipped by the bowstring. Also, it's not easy for everyone to find good feathers and waterproof them. On the other hand, hard plastic wings may be good, but they require certain types of bows. Because when they hit the handle of a traditional bow, the arrow starts wobbling around and does not help our accurate speed shooting. Not only that, but without some proper protection on our bow hand, it can get easily injured by the fast passing plastic. So I came up with a design that combines all pros without any cons. We will need any kind of thin but very durable rope or fishing line. Some wide transparent tape. It's the same material as the scotch tape but simply wider. And lastly, some electrical tape. I will be using some rope I got from a fishing store, but you can use what you already have. Each synthetic feather will need about 38 centimeters or 15 inches of rope. To work faster, I will pin two nails or screws at a distance that fits four and a half times my desired length. I'm always using some extra length to make knots. You can do this step with a rope expanding as long as you want. 
My working desk simply fits four of them, so that's what length works best for me. Now you can measure and mark the desired lengths on the rope and mark the middle point on each one of the four sections. I secured the rope on the first screw pin and then passed it around the nail pin. I pulled the rope to make it straight and tight and then I secured it on the pin. The synthetic feather strands will extend out about a finger's length. For me it's a little more than one centimeter and a half, or five eighths of an inch. Have this number in mind, because you don't want to fold your tape shorter than that. In fact, I prefer to fold it into a much longer shape that I can cut short later. It's easier to work that way. Pull some tape and have its edge face to the far side in front. Place it on there as if you are placing a wet towel outside to dry in the sun. Two sides are hanging down. Pull both of them down and adjust them to align their side edges together. Press them together to fit perfectly on one another's wideness. Apply pressure to take out as many bubbles as possible and with your nails press the root of the tape where the rope is. Continue folding your tape one more time until you have four layers placed together. Compress everything together again. Make one more plastic leaf next to the first one. At this stage I'm pressing each leaf's two sides together to fold them like opening a curtain. By doing that I have created a tension reliever shape to the root of the fletching. It's much easier for the fletching to bend around if it has folded shapes at its root. If these strands get hit or pulled hard, they will have the needed space to bend instead of getting ripped apart, as it could happen to a straight shape. Put electrical tape on both sides. Both tapes on their own would get ripped if for example the string slapped them, but together they're making the right component to hold each other. One is tough and can hold its shape but lacks elasticity while the other has too much elasticity but can't hold its straight shape. You have a set of six layers of tape in total, forming two plastic leaves. Cut their extensions down to the desired feather length. Now you need to shape thin strands to mimic a feather. To do so correctly, find the middle of each leaf and cut it down vertical to the rope. Be careful not to reach the rope with your blade or scissors. Open that spot to break the cutting path all the way down to the rope. Find the middle of the middle and do the same. Now find the middle of the middle of the middle. You get it. You are dividing each leaf by half three times. You started with one piece, you divided it in half and ended up with two sides. Then you divided them two and ended up with four sides. And lastly, you divided them again in half and ended up with eight strands. That's enough. This size is ideal to perfectly fit on the arrow's round curvature without getting folded. One last detail is to cut the strands on the two sides in an angle looking towards the middle. It will make sense later on why we should do that. You can move the two halves of your feathers on the rope to place them correctly on the marks if you haven't done that already. Continue making feathers for the other three marked sections of the rope. Once you're done, cut the rope on the marked spots to separate each synthetic feather strand. Leave them to the side for now. Which is the best spot for the fletching to be applied on the arrow? If you want to use my speed shooting technique, then you will need enough space between the knock and the fletching to be able to hold them. Your arrows need a proper handle too, as if they are spears. Put an arrow's knock on top of your pinky finger's root. Place the shaft on the middle knuckle of your index finger and make a fist. The corner formed by the knuckle is where the fletching should begin, to be out of the way of your handle. For my hand, the measurement was 8 cm slash 3 inches and a quarter. Mark that spot on all the arrows you're working on. Because I live on the northern hemisphere, I'm going to helix the fletching around the arrow counterclockwise to possibly enhance its flight and accuracy. Remember, this fletching is meant to force the arrow to spin on mid-air. This aerodynamic movement keeps the arrow straight as it reaches the target. So, in lamer terms, I will tie the back end on the shaft and then wrap the feather around towards the left side. Make a loop and adjust its knot to be exactly at the beginning of the strands. Move that loop on the marked point and tighten it. Wrap the extended rope around the shaft but place it towards the fletching side away from the knock. When you make one full circle, you will overlap the starting point and you will continue wrapping it towards the knock. Leave spaces in between but don't surpass the thickness of your electrical tape. Hold the rope in place and get your electrical tape. Cover the rope. With these spaces in between the rope, 
you have shaped a comfortable, non-slippery handle that works in combination with the knock. You will wrap the feather strands around the shaft two times and the two ends will be facing opposite to each other. Make sure that the rope is tight. By doing that you have formed the perfect aerodynamic angle on each strand and you have covered with wings the entire circle with no gaps. Do the same knot and wrap on the other side and tape it into place. Make a fist and crush the strands to sit down and become one with the shaft. This bending can be done on both directions. The angle of the strands in combination with the free and movable rope are keeping your feather completely safe from damage because it has enough space to get out of the way of the incoming pressure. But also this combination auto balances its shape when it flies thanks to the wind's pressure. One last step and this tutorial is over. We will use again a spray paint for walls with exactly the same logic as we used for the bow. We are taking advantage of its glue properties to seal all gaps and protect the thermoplastics from heat. Mostly you should use it on the fletching because it has many layers of tape that would get loose in time. But it's not only about gluing everything together, you need the color on your arrows. I made my training arrows to be very bright orange so that I can find them easily if I miss the target. The military mindset though wants them to be colored like something natural. Golden arrows look exactly like hay. If you shoot them where there are dry grasses, they'll be lost forever. A guerrilla fighter would use such arrows to hit and run knowing that even if the arrows miss the target, then it's not an issue because the enemy tracker will never find them. Both the bow and the arrows that we made today should be considered to be camo. Their natural colors blend in with the environment. And that was it. Now you're a falconer. Take good care of your hawk and be responsible.